Welcome to Degays Watch Degrassi. I'm Marisa. I'm David. This is the Degrassi Rewatch Podcast with one diehard fan and their reluctant co-host. Each week, my expertise and my skepticism will reveal tidbits, make connections, and shed a new rainbow on this Canadian after-school special. Today we are watching Mother and Child Reunion Part 2, Season 1, Episode 2. If you watched in the U.S., however, some people actually saw Mother and Child Reunion Part 1 and 2 as the season finale for Episode 1, which was probably extremely confusing watching the whole first season and then for some reason watching the last two. I wonder why U.S. channels did that. Do you think it's the content of the episode? Probably. Yeah. Or maybe they were trying to make it like, oh, it was summer after school, but it just doesn't make any sense. They're in Degrassi. It's their first time being there. It just, you know, that was a weird choice. There's several of those types of choices on the U.S. channels that play the Canadian show, so we'll definitely bring all those up. Here's our summary. Emma lies to her friends and pushes her mom out so she can meet her internet boyfriend. But there are unintended results. When her friends are suspicious, they hack her email. Meanwhile, the 80s Degrassi crew is at their reunion and Joey has decided to attend. But the 80s crew are in for some unintended results of their own. Now, without further ado, let's break into this episode. We start off at Emma's house. Spike is getting ready for her reunion. She's really excited. She mentions, it's like the prom I never got to go to, which is a reference to the fact that she was teen pregnant in the 80s show and missed out on a lot of that stuff. She's slightly suspicious about Emma pushing her out the door, but is too distracted and just ends up leaving without giving it too much thought. Emma's wearing Joey's fedora. And fedora check. Good one, David. The fedora is still very much in play. It's on Emma's head. And Spike grabs it and brings it to the reunion as she leaves. Everyone's arriving at the reunion. It's so exciting. Welcome back, class of 9091. Wow, they graduated the year before we were born. How about that? There were several deleted scenes that were a part of the reunion, most especially catching us up on the 80s crew and what they're off doing now. We hear from Dwight in the 80s show, he got HIV, but he's happy to tell us that he's still doing well and healthy. That's great news. Yuck and Arthur get referenced while Arthur isn't in picture Yuck says they're still partners they're working on a website and the internet's gonna be big that's what he has to tell us which is pretty hilarious because it's the OOs and we already know that by now Caitlin has a little speech where she mentions she's happy it's not junior high anymore Alexa and Simon who got married are still married and Alexa's happily pregnant. She says she already has a kid, another on the way. So that's cool. They're still together. Then the final tidbits, which will come back into play later. Snake mentions he's been teaching at Degrassi and he's single. And Allison, another character, talks about how she's an actor now. She's really proud of a diaper commercial she did recently. A little bit oddly proud of it. She also mentions she hopes to make it to Hollywood. Mm. There's also one more scene that I'm not sure if it's a deleted scene or if it was removed for the U.S. playing of it. I kind of saw mixed information about it. But it was definitely a scene that was recorded and it's wheels showing up to apologize to Lucy. He doesn't come in. But he tells Lucy how sorry he is, that he thinks about his mistake every day. Of course, this is referring to his choice to drunk drive, hurt Lucy, killed a child. And when he walks away, Lucy says, you know, I actually feel sorry for him. 
And I do too. Because he says he thinks about it every day and like, you know, making mistakes like that is really hard in life, but you got to move on from it and learn from it, you know? So. Or get so drunk that you don't remember it. Hmm. <laughs> now, those are the deleted scenes from the, from the reunion and we will, a couple of those will be coming back into play. So stay tuned. As people are walking in, they are getting tours from the current students, and this is when we first meet Ashley and Terry. They haven't had any plot points yet, but they are big characters in the upcoming episodes. We're at the reunion, and Caitlin's fiance, Keith, doesn't want a tour. He's just going to go get a drink. It's just another example of the fact that he's not invested. He's not trying that hard. So, Caitlin ends up going on the tour on her own, and who does she see but Joey? She looks so happy that he's there. They're both very excited. Then, we flash back to Emma. She's telling Manny she's not going to meet Jordan. She'll just do it when she's older. But she doesn't want to meet up because she wants to watch a show on the Wildlife Refuge. But we see her shaking nail polishes. She's very clearly getting ready to go out. So she's lying to Manny. We're back at the school and they're taking their tour. And Joey apologizes to Caitlin. He says a really funny line. The past is the past and the present is also the past. And he just wants her to know that he wants to be friends again. And so they that's the beginning of their new friendship. Now, this isn't really a fashion crime ticket, but the name tags that they're wearing are very 80s. They have a giant rainbow on them. They're very gay. If, like, if it was not an 80s throwback, then I would really question who bought those. They're talking, and Allison comes up. She says, oh, hi, I remember you guys. And she loves Caitlyn's show. She mentions Joey's commercial. She says, it's sexy the way you tear your shirt off. Almost made we, me want to buy a car. Can I buy you a drink instead? Caitlin says, I think that they're free. And a little bit of a twinge of jealousy, maybe, in Caitlin's voice. Like, ooh, I think they're free. Like, oh, I don't want her to buy him a drink. But guess what? Joey goes off with Allison instead. But as they're walking away, you can hear Joey saying something about a car, asking Allison. So it kind of seems like he doesn't really care about her get it, getting him that drink. He just wants to try to sell her a car. He wants to see if she's really in the market for a car. He's ever the salesman. Emma has arrived at her date. She's at a hotel. And here we go into our first real fashion crime ticket of the episode. Emma is wearing these very patterned, very intense pants. They kind of have a motif that I think is hearkening back to her love of animals and her environmentalism, but they are just so hilarious and very OOs. I'm pretty sure she wears them throughout the this, this series as well, so those will pop back up in this season. Manny's worried about Emma. She goes to find JT and Toby to try and get some help. The funniest thing, when she walks in the door, JT puts on these joke glasses and does a little oi, oi, oi move with them, and she's like, what? At his nerdiness, and it makes me crag up every single time. It is hilarious. Oh, man. But she's really worried about Emma because she wasn't at her house, and she's worried that she actually did go off and meet that weird person. Toby tells a story about a woman who ended up in pieces after meeting someone on the internet. This was a big thing when the internet first became big before social networking. People were really skeptical about it and nowadays we meet people off the internet and it's not so much of a big thing but back then it was and this was a big warning episode <laughs> for us kids. Okay, we do a lot of flip-flopping in this episode, scene to scene. So we're back at the reunion. Joey has three drinks in hand. Maybe he's getting one for Caitlin, one for him, and one for Allison. Not sure. 
But as he's rounding the corner, he overhears Keith and Allison talking. Keith is talking about how, you know, Caitlin is pushing marriage. He calls her Katie. Just these nicknames for her just don't work at all. And he's about to make it big in Hollywood. And he doesn't want to get married is the distillation of what he's saying. And this is where that deleted scene with Allison comes back into play. She's done that diaper commercial. She wants to make it into Hollywood with the diaper commercial in hand. And now she's flirting with this director, hoping that maybe he's her way in. And he even says, oh, yeah, you know, you can come visit me. I'll show you all around. And the and it's really stupid. I mean, isn't it a stupid plot point? Oh, we're going to have Allison pour her way into Hollywood. I mean, was that her character in the 80s one? No, it's just, I think the whole purpose of it is this, this scene right here. Kind of a dick move to do to someone's character. True. Luckily, she never shows up again. (laughs) So she can go out with a bang all she wants. This is the beginning of Joey and Caitlin's renewed friendship. And he's taking that seriously. This is him... He's listening, and he's about to go into full friend mode with this. He is not happy about the way that Keith is treating her. You know, you could say a little ironic, being the way the things that he did to her in high school. Ironic that he is now the person getting angry that another person is possibly cheating on her. But it's almost him redeeming himself. He's going to get back that lost time. So we're back at the hotel. Emma's waiting for her date. You can see on her pants, there's like water and then a sunset. They're just like, they're like hand painted pants or something. And they're very, very funny. Bell bottomy, just so OOs. And a man comes up to her. A man carrying a pizza and says, oh, are you Emma? I know Jordan. I'm his teacher. Real quick, he has supposedly bought a pizza for several young boys, maybe not teenaged, but, you know, right in that pocket. That pizza's very small. Could six teenagers eat that and be satisfied? No. What do you think? Well, luckily they don't exist. (laughs) Spoiler! Of course, if you're like me and you're watching this moment... You are already, oh, at like a 10. Like, this is danger. But Emma is just too excited to meet Jordan. He mentions the petition, which she's so excited about. It's the petition she helped him, and she just can't wait for it. So she goes on with him. But before we move on, another fashion crime ticket to give out. This Creepy man is wearing a very OO's necklace with like a shark tooth on it or something. Oh my goodness. The male jewelry in these first few episodes is really funny. Um, very of the time. Now we're back with JT, Toby, and Manny. They're trying to hack Emma's email, which her email screen name, by the way, Sparkle Spaz 28. Mm. Very ableist, but, you know, we didn't have a lot of that knowledge as children, did we, about how problematic our language was. So, but yeah, spaz is an ableist word. Avoid that. They're looking at her security question. What's mom's favorite rock band? This is about to become our first teaching moment. The zits? Right? The zit remedy, obviously. No, that is not the answer. (laughs) What is? It will be revealed. Now, pizza box alert. Is this Little Caesars? It says pizza pizza. Maybe it's a hot and ready. Maybe that's why it's so small. But then again, it has mushroom on it. And they don't do the hot and ready with the mushroom. They... No. They don't have vegetables at Little Caesars. Maybe in Canada. 
right? Maybe Canadian Little Caesars is different. A lot of things in Canada are different. That's what I've learned from this show. A lot more than you'd think. Emma's about to have a slice of pizza and she starts to get a vibe. You can see it in her eyes. And here we go with a Canada speak alert. She says, I think I left my bag downstairs. The word in the U.S. is bag, although not everywhere. We're here on the West Coast. We say bag. I think in the Midwest and possibly the South, other parts of the country, they say bag as well. But that is, I'm still calling it a Canadian speak. She gets scared. She can't open a door. She doesn't know how to open a hotel room door, apparently. I have always found this as one of the weird plot points where she's about to escape and she can't figure out how to open the door and that stops her from getting out. I've never been able to understand that. Figures out how to lock the bathroom door, though. Yeah. And then later she does unlock it. So it's like, what? Like, it's just, it's obviously for the plot. Um, they could have done the blocking differently so that they didn't have to have that there, but oops, they didn't do it well enough. So I guess they had to figure out a way for her to lock herself in the bathroom without exiting. And I guess that's as far as they went with that one. Now, Mr. Radish is on stage speaking. He was a teacher to all these people and he's now the principal of the school. So he's introducing Caitlin. Caitlin gets to make it. I don't know why she's the one making the speech. That's another a little bit of a mystery. I don't think she was on the committee or anything since she lives in L.A. now. Is she just the most famous one? So she gets to make a speech. Is that how it'll be <laughs> for I'm us? Sure that's how most famous people's school reunion is. Very true. Very true. So she's making her speech, talking about old times and new times. And her fiancé, Keith, says how special she is. And this sets Joey off. Joey can be a little bit hot-headed. That is a continued theme throughout the show. And he starts a little bit of an argument because he knows what Keith has been saying to Allison. Keith makes the mistake of touching Joey's face and Joey loses it. This is our it goes there moment for the episode. Joey and Keith stand up and get into a fist fight. Caitlin leaves the stage, tries to figure out what's going on, and that's when Allison says, So he has doubts about getting married. Who doesn't? And Caitlin says, You don't want to marry me, Keith. And the sadness in her voice is just cutting. It cuts through the whole room. And Radich, with a classic move, covers it up with, hey, everyone, let's dance. No big. Which, ugh, classic Radich. He's a very cover-uppy person. Emma is locked in the bathroom. You know, the creepy man says, oh, you know, I don't want to scare you, so I'll go down to the lobby and you can leave. Now, Caitlin takes off a ring and says, does this bring back memories? Which is referring, which, which she's saying to Joey, referring to when they were engaged. She kind of tells him the story about how her life's been going, how her relationships have been going, and reveals that she's actually the one that proposed to Keith. She mentions the fact that she gave Emma relationship advice and that she's a fraud, but in reality, she just doesn't know how bad the advice she did give to Emma, not knowing yet that Emma's internet boyfriend is not the person that anyone thought he was. She, well, Toby was right. Toby was right. The only trustworthy one in the bunch. JT had suspicions. Caitlin asks Joey about his wife, and it's a very sad story. He talks about how he called, she called him Joe, and she smelled like rain. And I always thought it was a little sad we didn't get to see Joey really be in love because I think he, you know, he had his issues as a kid. He was a little bit of a playboy or whatever, but as an adult, I wanted to see him get his love. How'd she die? They don't ever really explain. That's stupid. I don't think that they explain. Um, but Angela's like five, so it had to be something tragic, right? Because Angela being 
such a bad actor? <laughs> Probably <clears throat> cancer, if I had to guess, but I don't think they ever really say. Ran over by one of Joey's dodgy cars. He'd probably sell the car lot if that was the case. Okay, we're back with Joey, or Joey. That's JT. <laughs> we're back with JT, Toby, and Manny. They're looking at Emma's eco page. It's really funny because it's one of those really old 90s looking websites where it's kind of like two-dimensional and very cutesy borders she has a green background with cutesy little sunflower borders and they're looking through her website i've always wondered if this is how she met her internet boyfriend they never really explain how it was that they connected but i'm guessing that he might have found her eco page somehow and then you know targeted her from there emma's eco page it has a picture of my mom at Degrassi. We should try to pause and like read all of the tidbits. Do you think that's possible? Here is what Emma's website says about her mom. My mom was called Spike when she went to Degrassi. Guess why? Now me and my friends are going to Degrassi too. Weird, huh? My mom at Degrassi. She looks sad here, but I don't know why. She used to be blonde like me sort of what's that photo from it's very clearly a still from the show but i don't know when it's from i think it has to be from one of the later seasons though because she sort of stopped spiking her hair as much in the later seasons because she had a baby so she probably didn't have enough time <laughs> so there you go that is Emma's eco page and it says very big send me email on the front so that must be where she was found by her internet boyfriend they notice that in the picture her mom's wearing a shirt that says the pogues and guess what her secret question that leads them straight into her email and Toby says if I can do it so can Jordan and he's exactly right and this is the whatever it takes moment of this episode. Toby says, sorry, Emma, we're going in because they're going to do whatever it takes to keep their friend safe, even if it means reading her private emails. This is a very important teaching moment. This was very clearly teaching us as kids, hey, kids, choose your password carefully, choose your secret question carefully, because if it's... If someone can look it up on the internet or guess it, then you are making yourselves vulnerable. I always found it strange that they want your secret question to be like, what's the name of the high school you went to? Or like, where were you born? And it's like, you can look that up on the internet. Well, there's always favorite uncle or favorite aunt. I feel like that one's a good one because who knows? And sometimes I even forget who I picked during the time. I always do, what was the name of your first pet? And what was the name of your first pet? Higgle Biggle. There you go. Now everyone can hack me. Now, as we continue, one of the creepiest moments in Degrassi history. Emma has suddenly learned how to undo a door, but it doesn't matter because he threatens that one noise and I'll tape your mouth. Still one of the creepiest moments in Degrassi history even creepier earlier there was a camera what's about to happen so we're back to the teaching moment they're going through emma's emails and they're explaining how someone can trick you this is exactly how people catfish people they can look up exactly what you're into because it's all listed on your facebook or whatever and then they can be pretend to be into the same stuff and then make you think that they're just, you know, reading into your soul, as Emma always says. But in reality, he liked chicken run and fresh air and hiking because he read her email and knew that she liked that stuff. We get to see through the camera's view, which is such a creepy move on the Degrassi writer's part. We see the, like, gross porno he's about to make with this underage girl, and it couldn't be creepier. Luckily, 
through their sleuthing, the kids have found the hotel name and the room number that Emma is probably in. They do a little jab at Toby, which I find not very funny. They're running all the way to the school and he's like behind them because I guess he's the quote unquote fat one. We always laugh at who's the fat one in these older seasons because literally none of them are fat. They're all just different body types and none of them are fat. Not even that being fat is bad, but either way, it's just funny, the standards back then. Like, Terry goes through many body issues throughout the seasons and she's so gorgeous, it's ridiculous. She's not, it's just crazy that she's the fat one it just doesn't make sense anymore so we're at the reunion we're seeing snake and spike are dancing Ooh, remember in that deleted scene when he mentioned he was single and he does a smooth line about how oh he gets to dance with the students mothers because he's a teacher and he's very clearly flirting but that is interrupted quickly when the kids run in with their news about Emma. Toby and JT are wearing kind of ridiculous outfits again. I guess they kind of fit with the era, but Toby's wearing cargo shorts and a long polo that's like almost to his knees. It's much, much too long. (laughs) Now, Snake is rushing. They don't get to go to the confrontation. No. There's space for them. I know they could have fit in the jeep but no they have to go home and she says I'll call your parents and let them know ugh so gross creepy guy sniffing her this scene's very interesting because it's showing what's happening and then it's splicing that with them running towards and it's kind of got this weird soundtrack like will they make it almost matrixy like well will they make it oh no but emma stays strong and they do make it and she screams out as soon as she hears her mom she does a really sick back roll nice gymnastic skills emma and gets out the door third time's the chart the room number it was in the email Snake says, make a move and I'll break your neck. Got it? And the position he has him in, like, how would you break someone's neck like that? Like, (laughs) it's just very silly. The Canadian police come. You can tell they're Canadian police because they have the red band on their hats. And they haven't shot him? No, and they didn't shoot him. It's another difference. But he's white, David. They wouldn't have shot him anyway. Her old modem, it's so gigantic. The old computer is getting taken out as evidence. It's humongous and has stickers all over it. It's gray. Who remembers that gray plastic that they used to use for computers? Oh my gosh. Spike is pissed. Emma and Spike argue. Emma brings up, haven't you made mistakes? Like having me maybe? It's a little bit of a low blow. But she tells her mom she doesn't remember what it's like to be 12. And Spike softens up and tells her, hey, we have to keep talking. We have to keep communicating. That's, that's how we'll get through anything. And that's another little teaching moment. Teaching us, hey, you got to always talk to your parents. And this is the make it through moment of the episode. Emma softens up too tells her how scared she was and they hug and they know that everything's going to be okay. They made it through this moment. Oh, Emma's watch is super similar to Manny's. They both have the really chunky, clear plastic digital watch that was popular at that time. So they hug and they know they're going to make it through. And that is the end of my mother and child reunion part two. Thanks for listening. On the next episode, we'll learn all about the fragile family dynamics between blended families coming together at Degrassi. Oh yeah, did you know that Toby and Ashley are living in the same house? Will there be drama? You don't have to ask that. It's Degrassi.